Welcome to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. I hope you had a happy Thanksgiving. Right now, we are in Trenton outside the Department of Health. In a moment, we will go inside to talk to the health commissioner about an outbreak of a deadly virus in North Jersey that is still threatening the lives of children. Also on Jersey Matters this week, too many children go to school in New Jersey hungry. We'll talk about a new bill that is trying to solve that problem. And for the first time, we had a Miss America pageant without a swimsuit competition. Is it going to continue that way? We'll take a look at the controversy. And now my interview with Health Commissioner Sharif Elnahal about several disease outbreaks across the state. We're pleased to be joined by New Jersey Health Commissioner Sharif Elnahal. Thank you so much for doing this. Appreciate it. I know you have a whole lot going on. I want to start with an update on the um, outbreak of the adenovirus at the Wanakue Nursing and Rehabilitation Center in North Jersey. What is the latest? Well, as you know, this has been a devastating outbreak. The outcomes have been tragic. Eleven children have died. We have many more who are infected, many of whom are in hospitals now, and the department has been focusing relentlessly on containing the spread of the virus at the facility. Unfortunately, we don't have the tools that we have for many other diseases and outbreak types that you've seen before. We don't have a vaccine for adenovirus that would work for these immunocompromised kids, and we also don't have a cure for adenovirus. A virus. There's no antibiotic, for example, uh, or other medicine that works, antiviral, that would work against it. So really the only tool we have is to prevent its spread as much as possible. Only this past week was the facility finally able to separate ill patients from sick patients and the department upon hearing that and upon uh, unfortunately discovering several infection control deficiencies took enforcement action on the facility that actually required them to separate those patients. And so uh, I had called out for help from the Medical Reserve Corps across the state. These are uh, medical volunteers, clinicians that come uh, to aid in medical emergencies. Uh, the facility was actually able to do it within a matter of a uh, day and a half. And so I ended up canceling that call. But it just goes to show how much action we're taking every single day to control the spread of the virus. It's interesting you talked about how much action you're taking because there was recently an editorial in the North Jersey record that was critical of, of you and the state response and the facility saying there wasn't enough outrage, there's not enough being done. Was that true at the time? Have you rectified that or were they wrong? Uh, I don't think that was an accurate representation of our response. And by the way, I've spoken to Bruce uh, Lowry since then, the article of that, the author of that article. Uh, I share the sentiment about where that article came from. We are really affected by this. We are very upset uh, that this outbreak uh, was allowed to get as bad as it was. Unfortunately, the facilities there limited our ability to separate the patients until very recently, which is what we've determined to be the most important reason why we've seen the outbreak become uh, as bad as it has been. So in response, I wrote an editorial, actually for the record, uh, that explained uh, why adenovirus is so difficult to control, everything we've done so far to control it, and what our next steps are. And so uh, I think I very much sympathize that people want answers. And uh, we've tried to provide as many answers publicly as possible, uh, but I'm confident that the state has done everything it possibly can and more, including the Medical Reserve Corps call, uh, to see uh, if we can't contain the virus as much as possible. You, st you say, you just said to me a moment ago that you're doing as much as you can and, and you're doing everything you can do, but I hear frustration. There's frustration uh, about the way, was the way the facility reacted to this? That's what you're frustrated by? I'm frustrated that the uh, virus has affected so many kids and, if, and, uh, and that killed could have been so prevented? many kids. Well, we're still looking into that. We are doing an investigation. Uh, there's going to be hearings soon on it where we'll get together with the legislature and have a uh, good discussion. I don't want to reveal too much now about that investigation, uh, but we're concerned. We want to make sure that we learn as much as possible about what happened to make sure that the chances of it happening again are absolutely minimized. Uh, and part of that is an investigation of the facility's response. The 11th child died recently. You have many more that are in serious condition. What can you tell us about them? I mean, are, is there, what is the outlook for some of them? So the uh, patients in hospitals are scattered in hospitals actually across the state. 
Uh, and we are following up with those cases every single day. I've been on the phone with hospital CEOs, uh, making sure those kids uh, are being taken care of and understanding what their clinical status is. Uh, right now, uh, we are uh, watching every case closely, including the ones at the facility. Unfortunately, these kids are so medically fragile that they can turn on a dime uh, when uh, you don't even know it. And so uh, right now, uh, we hope that there will be no deaths, no more deaths, but it's impossible to say, uh, given that adenovirus is such a severe strain and a severe virus for these kids and their baseline status, which is quite severe. So you have that outbreak there. You also had a problem at University Hospital in, in Newark, New Jersey, when there was a bacterial outbreak among infants there. Has that been taken care of? Uh, well, no, it hasn't been taken care of. We're still following that very closely. We haven't had a new case now in a number of days, a number of weeks actually, and so we're encouraged by that, but we're remaining very vigilant. Uh, we've forced them to hire an infection control uh, expert as much as we've also done with WANAQ. They actually, starting today, have had to have an infection control expert and an infectious disease physician specifically helping them with infection control. We did that at Newark. We think it's starting to work and we hope to see uh, no more cases there as well. Will there be an investigation and could there be possible repercussions for the hospital because of this? Uh, absolutely. So we are uh, undertaking an investigation now. I've already taken an enforcement action. If we need to take further action, we will. One of the children, one of the infants was transferred and died. Was it because of the bacterial infection? Uh, it's unclear at this point. So that's still being investigated and we actually may never know the answer to that. Uh, this is a uh, group of kids, just like the kids at WANAQ, that have a lot of underlying medical conditions. And uh, when you have a premature baby, 23 weeks old, as this baby was, they could pass away for a lot of reasons. So we're really trying to parse out whether it was the virus or something else. Could it be safe to say it was a contributing factor? Uh, well, we, we have to review that file, but it's, of course, very concerning. It can be a very aggressive, severe illness in kids who have it. And there's a measles outbreak on, on top of this in, in Ocean County. Is that under control? It's not under control and it's extremely concerning. Uh, we have now this as a threat to the general public. There are a number of unvaccinated individuals in Ocean County and throughout the state, and those individuals are at risk. We have now given several public statements and public declarations uh, of every site where there's been an exposure, and we're informing the general public so that if you've been exposed, you can call your health care provider and let them know and have the subsequent follow-up needed. What is the reason for these outbreaks? I know some people are saying it's because of the concern about the vaccine. Others are <laughs> saying it's because of immigrants who were not vaccinated in their own communities. Well, the measles outbreak in particular, if you're unvaccinated, it puts you at risk. And so a big part of what we want to do uh, is make sure everyone is vaccinated that can be vaccinated and get the word out about the importance of vaccination. But and that's a major uh, initiative that we're undertaking. You understand though, when, when people start talking about immigrants, it becomes political. Yeah, and so we're not focusing on uh, aspects around that. There are a lot of indigenous uh, f folks who've been in the country for a long time who are unvaccinated uh, for a variety of reasons. So regardless of where someone comes from, we think it's really important for them to be vaccinated. The last time I was here, I came in specifically to talk about uh, legalized marijuana and medical marijuana, and there was so much going on like there is time, this time, we never got to it. When we come back, I want to talk to you about legalized marijuana and medical marijuana, and if there should be any concerns as we're moving towards uh, legalized marijuana for the state. That's when we continue our conversation with the health commissioner when Jersey Matters continues right after this.